Hello, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Peter Eicher, a Solutions Marketing Manager at Pure. I'm going to be talking about how protecting your data is a snap. This is a comprehensive look at the different flash array data protection functionalities uh, that are available in the product. Uh, and I hope you find this very uh, interesting and informative. So let's begin quickly with uh, why do we care about data protection? Why is this an important topic? Well, it really comes down to reducing risk, which is increasingly an organizational imperative at, at uh, most organizations, right? Now the risk landscape uh, encompasses a couple of things, right? The two main ones are that there's uh, a concern about risk of system downtime, right? That is applications being offline and then you're unable to service your customers, your constituents, whatever the case may be. And then there's the risk of actual data loss, right? Not just being uh, systems being down, but losing data that you, uh, you know, may be legally obligated to maintain. The result of either of these uh, scenarios can be financial, legal, or reputational costs against your organization. Now, there are certain things also that become risk multipliers, right? What makes the risk level go up? Uh, and one of those major ones is system complexity. Right? Uh, one of the largest causes of data of both system downtime as well as data loss is human error. Right? And human error comes from complexity. As systems are harder and harder to manage, uh, it naturally leads to more errors. Right? That's just the way things work. Uh, there also can be one that maybe you don't think of as much, which is that software feature costs can be creating protection gaps. If you have some uh, storage, for example, that charges you extra for additional uh, data protection features, you may not be using them because they may not be within your budget. Right, so that's something to think about as well. Now let's look quickly at some of the challenges of the legacy data protection. I mean, data protection has been around a very long time uh, and it's suffered from a lot of the same challenges for a very long time, right? And it begins with complexity, as we talked about, right? Which can lead to more errors and more mistakes. Uh, storage protection features are often difficult to implement and difficult to manage, right? If you have multiple different types of storage, even different uh, types from within the same vendor, you have multiple management silos, they're all handled a bit differently, right? That can be more complicated uh, and support can be a challenge. Uh, a lot of data protection is slow, particularly if you're using a legacy style of backup and recovery, right? It can take not only too long to protect applications and data, but way too long to recover them. And a lot of organizations can't meet uh, their recovery point objectives and recovery time objectives. In fact, we have recent data from a survey that ESG did that shows uh, most organizations, in fact, are unable to meet their uh, desired goals. Uh, data protection, and particularly storage, can be cloudless. And I mean two things by that. One is that actual integration into the cloud can be cumbersome, it can be difficult uh, to do, it can be complicated. But when we talk about cloud, we're not just talking about public cloud as a place, right? Uh, we're talking about a, a model of management, right? And cloud list basically means it's difficult to, to do things. It's difficult to automate uh, operations. Uh, and one of the key things there is it becomes difficult to reuse data for added business value. Many organizations are trying to take the backup data that they collect every day and actually use it to do valuable things like reporting, analytics, uh, te uh, test dev, for example. Uh, but that's not always easy to do. And finally, it's costly, right? As we mentioned, array software can be expensive. Uh, certain features may only be available to you at a higher level or more costly level of licensing. And there's also the cost of system downtime. Now we talk about downtime mostly as something going wrong, right? Somebody makes a mistake or something fails, but there's also planned downtime, which is still downtime. Right? There's no difference. It's still downtime, whether it's uh, unplanned or planned. Uh, and that can definitely lead to uh, additional costs uh, in your organization. So how does Pure handle this? Let's look uh, broadly across all the different things that are included in Flash Array, and we'll drill into each of these. So I'll just quickly run through them uh, right here. So it begins with business continuity, right? And your first step is actually you know, the best defense is a good offense, so to speak. And the first thing you wanna do is make sure that systems don't go down at all, right? And that's where business continuity comes in with our active cluster uh, synchronous replication. This is gonna allow you to keep applications running even in the event that one of the storage uh, arrays fails or you know, you're disconnected from it or whatever. Uh, then you have disaster recovery, right? Which is not quite real time, but our active DR functionality is very close to it. It is, it's a continuous data replication technology. Data is constantly moved from one array to another, which gives you near zero RPL. We'll drill into that. Then you have more traditional asynchronous replication, which is that scheduled type data copy, right? It's based off point in time snapshots. And this is where every hour, half hour, once a day, whatever the SLA might be, you periodically take that data and copy it to a different location, whether it's a DR site, a colo, or an MSP, whatever the case. 
And then you have data archiving, right? This is where a lot of cloud comes in that you may be required, you know, part of data protection may be keeping data around for a certain period of time. So we have great capabilities to do snapshot offload uh, into the cloud as well as into uh, third party uh, NFS storage targets. And finally, you have that local protection using snapshots, which is, which is that ability to uh, manage your day-to-day -day operational protection and recovery using snapshots, which is a really great way to do it. And we'll talk about that. And underlying all of this is our Pure One management, uh, which gives you that predictive support capability, as well as you have that layer of Purity REST API, which allows you to automate a lot of this functionality, whether that's through scripting, whether that's through uh, uh, tools like Ansible, for example, you have abilities to do uh, a lot of that. So let's look into these different functionalities. And I use this term rethink repeatedly through this because there's, we really want you to rethink uh, what you're doing around data protection. Now, there's two sides to this. If you're an existing pure customer, you have access to all these, all these features that I'm going to discuss, but you may not be using them. So we want you to rethink that. Rethink that, hey, you know, I have access to this cool active cluster thing. Maybe I should deploy it. Uh, if you're not a pure customer, right, you may want you want to rethink your approach to data protection in general, right? You want to give up some of those ideas you may have about things being difficult, things being expensive, things being cumbersome to manage, right? It's really, really different in the pure world, right? Simplicity is a key part of everything we do. So with that said, let's talk about active cluster. This is that true active active failover for true zero RPO. So this is where your hosts and your applications are connecting simultaneously to two arrays. Should one of those arrays fail or be disconnected somehow, or there's a power loss, whatever the scenario that array A goes down, you are continually, continually servicing those applications from array B, right? So there's no downtime at all. This is true business continuity. And this is very simple by design. It truly is four steps. I mean, it's less than 10 minutes to set this up. Now, if you're used to, uh, other storage vendors, you may have spent days or even weeks configuring something like this. You may think, how could it be you know, under 10 minutes? But it is, we can show you, be happy to show you. Uh, there's no add-on components to manage. And the cloud uh, media, the mediator, which is what decides you know, whether when something fails, if it goes to A or B, uh, that's cloud-based, it's automated. You don't even have to manage it, right? Which further reduces that risk of human error or somebody doing something wrong. Uh, superior savings because as we said, all future licensing is included. You get this as part of your flash array purchase at no additional charge. And it also saves you on bandwidth because we have uh, data compression is always on in these scenarios. Now one step uh, down from that zero RPO is near zero RPO with active DR. And this is a relatively new feature. Uh, there is a separate session on this, which I recommend you uh, take in if you're interested in this. And this allows you to do almost synchronous uh, replication, but at a further distance, right? Synchronous replication is always limited by distance, and that's just physics, right? You can't get a response even at speed of light speeds beyond a certain distance, it starts to affect the application. With active DR, what happens is site one, as your hosts write to that or flash array at site one, it continually sends that data across to site two, right? So you're getting almost a uh, synchronous copy. Now this is again, simple by design. It's very easy DR workflows, whether it's you know, the original setup, whether it's failing back in the event that you need to, you know, you have an outage at one site and you need to fail back, all very easy to do. Uh, it adapts on the fly. If the connection between sites goes down, it simply queues up that data and begins sending it when the link comes back up. Again, nothing you have to manage, it just handles all that and no additional infrastructure needed. And you really get superior protection from this. This is near zero RPO, but it lets you do it at longer distances than you can with uh, Active Cluster. And it's really ready when you are because it has a great ability, which is that you can pre-connect your servers or your applications at site two. So in the event of a site one failure, you're actually already ready to go. You simply you know, uh, promote the volumes at site two and they're already connected to the application, which is really cool and saves you a tremendous amount of time. An effort. Then you have asynchronous replication, right? Which is your more traditional model of scheduled replication, right? So I'm, if this, in this case, it's snapshot based. So I'm taking snapshots on my arrays and then every hour, half hour, once a day, whatever the schedule you wish, uh, those uh, snapshots get copied to a different array at a different site within, you know, it could be anywhere. This is over any distance, so it could be worldwide, it could be local, doesn't make any difference. And you can do this in all kinds of directions as you see in the uh, diagram, you can do one-to-one. -one. Uh, so, you know, 
array one copies to array two, array copies to array one, you can do fan out, uh, multiple, you know, one array sending to multiple arrays, fan in, many arrays sending to a single array. All those different topologies are available to you. Again, very easy to configure, no need for professional services. And this works combined between Flash Array X and Flash Array C. Now that's actually a great use case for Flash Array C, which is a higher capacity uh, Flash Array. Uh, at a lower uh, price point per terabyte. Uh, it's a great uh, product to use for snapshot consolidation. For example, you might have multiple flash array Xs doing high performance workloads. You can send all those replicas to a single flash array C, which gives you a consolidated repository of copies, right? Gives you again, superior protection. You get that point in time copy of data, makes it very easy to recover from uh, snapshot images uh, quickly. And data reduction is maintained across the board. So you get the benefits of whatever uh, data reduction, compression, deduplication you're getting on the primary. Those uh, data reductions are maintained over the wire and on the target side as well. So you get those data uh, footprint savings across the board. So cloud connected snapshots. This is the big category. I'm only going to touch on it here. Definitely you know, suggest you drill into this if this is an area that you're interested in. Now, pure uh, flash array is cloud you know has native cloud capabilities in it it can actually be run in the cloud uh, what we call cloud block store which is basically a public cloud version of flash array that functions identically in terms of the same software set lots of different things you can do here right you can look at cloud as simply a backup or archive layer right you can take snapshots copy them up to the cloud uh, Cool thing about our snapshots uh, is that they are portable, what we call portable snapshots, which means I, the snapshot is not dependent on the array that it comes from, which is pretty unique. Uh, so for example, I could have array you know, 10 and I could copy snapshots from array 10 up into the cloud. Six months from now when I need to recover one of those snapshots, I can copy that back down to array number 17, right? It doesn't matter. I can restore that snapshot to any other flash array, which is really cool capability. Uh, so you can use the cloud as a backup or archive tier. You can do DR to the cloud, actually spinning applications back up in the cloud in the event of a failure. You can use cloud for data reuse, which is a great use case, right? Spinning up copies of your on-premises data to do other things. So take those databases, for example, move them into the cloud, and then leverage cloud compute resources for dev tests, for analytics, for all kinds of different uh, operations, right? To get value out of that backup data. And finally, natively in the cloud, if you're using cloud block store, which is again, cloud-based version of Flash Array, you can do snapshots in the cloud. And those snapshots are a lot uh, more efficient, uh, a lot quicker than the kind of snapshots you get natively with, with uh, cloud providers. So it gives you that same functionality, just happens to be in the cloud. And again, totally portable between on-prem and cloud, right? The data transport is always, you know, these copies are updated incrementally. You have the compression uh, with cloud blocks, or you also get the duplication over the wire. So you save a lot on uh, bandwidth. We talked a bunch about snapshots. Let's just touch on it a bit more. Uh, snapshots really remain the best, the best function we have, the best way we have to protect high IO workloads, you know, primarily databases, but other things as well, busy file systems and so forth. The best way you can protect these is using snapshots. Uh, if you're struggling to protect certain workloads using traditional backup, because it just takes too long, you can't shut off the application for long periods of time, whatever the case may be, uh, you really want to look at snapshots, right? Our snapshots are engineered for speed. They have no performance overhead when you take them. You can do tens of thousands of snapshots on an array. And the real strength is that they are easy and flexible and usable. Right? You can take those zero impact uh, snap, you can take any zero footprint snapshot, turn it into an addressable clone. So it's data you can read and write to as a separate copy. So again, you can do all kinds of additional workloads on it. Uh, the snapshots, as we said, are portable and there's no snapshot chains. You know, a lot of uh, products, if you're doing snapshots over time, you can't go in and like, delete a bunch of them in the middle of the chain because it destroys the integrity of all the snapshots. It doesn't work that way with Pure. So if you need to recover a space, for example, you can go ahead and delete snapshots from within the chain and it doesn't affect the integrity of the uh, remaining snapshots, which is really cool. It makes management a whole lot easier, right? Finally, talk briefly about data protection partners. Now, as I said, you can manage all this natively with Pure One uh, interface, the Pure One you know, management tool. You can do it through automation, through command line, through uh, PowerShell, through tools like Ansible. There's all kinds of ways you can manage uh, all these data protection functionalities, but you can also go to a lot of a number of our technology partners who will do this for you, and this makes it even easier. 
right? Uh, so a lot of these uh, vendors have integrated flash array snapshots with things like VMware, with applications, with databases, and so forth. And they give you very easy protection and recovery workflows. Uh, some of the backup vendors on here, like Commvault, Beam, Veritas, they can also allow you to do you know, traditional type backups, but using pure uh, flash array snapshots as a backup source, which eliminates the impact of backing up from the host. And you have other vendors like Catalogic, or just a straightforward uh, snapshot management tool, doesn't integrate with backup, but gives you that ability to do the application awareness, the database workflows, and all that kind of stuff. Again, all these vendors have their own uh, different feature sets. I'm not gonna drill into them, but I definitely recommend uh, if you're looking for help managing uh, your snapshots, particularly with that application database type integrations, these are great uh, vendors to look at. So, you know, you have a bunch of them there, you can uh, look and see which one most suits your needs. So finally, just a couple of things to point out if you wanna dive a little bit deeper. Uh, if you're interested in that snapshot and recovery integration with Veeam, for example, have this great uh, light board uh, featuring Veeam's uh, Dave Russell. If you know Dave, he's been around the data protection world for a long time, very, very smart, smart guy. Uh, this is a great light board. Uh, he really walks through how it all works. Uh, as I mentioned, there's this another Accelerate session on uh, ActiveDR, which is our new near synchronous replication functionality. That session will give you all the details you need to know about it. And finally, in general, if you're looking for the latest on Pure Data Protection, we have our modern data protection webpage on the Pure website. You can always go there and that will kind of link you off into all the different uh, uh, data protection functionalities that are across the Pure portfolio. So with that, I hope you found that um, entertaining, perhaps, and at least informative. Uh, and I thank you for joining me today.